I have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. That might possibly be the most painful thing I've experienced in my life. It's really not fun. That affects your body's production of collagen, which in turn affects your joints, organs, and everything that makes a human a human. The collective group of Erlos Danlos syndromes are characterised by what we call connective tissue abnormalities. There's also a female predominance of hypermobile type, which is unexplained. Ehlers Danlos makes you dislocate and sublux all the blim and time. There's comorbidities like stomach issues and heart issues and there's everything issues, but primarily it's dislocation and subluxations and general pain. We have three daughters. The eldest one is Tyler. She is a bright, funny, annoying, clever, everything teenage girl who happens to have a connective tissue disorder. It's genetic, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, hypermobility type. It generally shows itself in puberty and that's what happened at 11. She bit on a carrot that she thought was cooked, so it was a little firm and it levered her jaw out. We were thinking at the time, who does that? About eight in the morning, I'll, I'll go up, put a flush through her feed. If she hasn't finished, it's very close to being finished, so I'll undo it from her face, take it off the pump. If she's lucid, she'll say thank you. Sometimes she doesn't even know I'm there. Don't really go out much. At night time, I'm hooked up to the feeding pump. And then in the daytime, I'm either dancing or sleeping. Morning. She cannot take any nutrition and any food in at the moment. It's kind of a recent complication of her syndrome. So I'm crushing up her medication now. She can't take the whole pill or absorb the medication as it is, so I have to pound it up and put it in juice. When Tyler started having more and more Hi. things happen and go wrong with your favourite time of day, it wasn't just injuries, pain and less time at school. And, swirl. and the doctor was, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong. I've one day put all her symptoms, and you shouldn't do it, into Google Doctor, and up popped Ella's danlos syndrome, and I read all about it the whole time, light bulb moment, going, this is Tyler got referred to an Ellis Danlos specialist, and he, he diagnosed Tyler a year ago and diagnosed me on the same day. I didn't realise I had it myself. Uh, pardon me? <laughs> Love you. The treatment area of EDS is, is very controversial. There are some people who feel as though they've found and developed strategies to alleviate symptoms and perhaps fix some of the issues. But it's true to say an evidence base that's rock solid is lacking. Support and recognition of this disorder and validation of it as a respectable, known diagnostic category will help a lot. Then these people will not feel so misunderstood and not feel so neglected. I was quite glad to finally have a diagnosis and like be validated that there's something wrong with me. <laughs> have a look please if I got rhythm. I need Tyler to learn Bailey's part. I mean we were always wondering why I'd have a sore tummy or I'd be like hurting my knees and ankles and shoulders and everything. And five, six, seven, go. When I get to dancing I'm immediately like 10 times happier because I'm like, I'm gonna dance now. I get to see my friends. I'm very flexible if I say so myself. I think it is part of hypermobility. 99% of my joints dislocate. Just remembering girls that you're dancing this on Saturday in the competitions. Could you now do it with a Sophie please? The worst ones are my hips, my knees, my shoulders, my jaw, my elbow and they all just dislocate all the time.
They're mostly subluxations, actually, which is like a dislocation, but it either doesn't go fully out or it goes fully out, but then comes back in. Lots of gymnasts and dancers do tend to have a form of hypermobility, and it can range from hypermobility spectrum right to Ellis Danlos hypermobility type, and further on into more serious parts of the condition. Most children are hypermobile, but what separates out many children with Ehlers Danlos syndrome is that it becomes disabling. It becomes painful. You begin to dislocate or sublux joints. You have trouble with your gastrointestinal symptoms. And then it becomes obvious that there's more going on than just simple childhood hypermobility. When your body's crapping out on you almost 24-7, it's kind of hard to stay mentally happy, I guess. But I, I love TAP and I also love the people at TAP, so it's, it always perks me up. So well done, all of you. And good, good. School is such a big part of everyone's social life and I don't go to school, I go to health school which is really good but it's just not the same as real school and I miss it which is weird because I'm 16 I should not be enjoying school but I do. I guess there are some benefits to social media because even though this isolates Tyler quite profoundly in her room, she can still have contact with her friends daily. I think my friends are really good with everything and they're checking up on me quite often and we still talk fairly often and my dancing friends are really good with like supporting me. It's very easy to get bored to death when you're sitting in bed with an injury or you're just incredibly exhausted from a day of like dancing. I think drawing is a way to get away from everything. It's all stuff to forget about all the annoying stuff, the failing body that I am in. But it's fine because it's still working well enough for me. Well, not really, but it's working. Ella's danlos syndrome might possibly be the most painful thing I've experienced in my life. It's really not fun. But I think the most painful bit is watching everyone go about their lives. It's like, wait for me. <laughs>
That has led to a variety of, of reactions, I think, to people who present with EDS-type symptoms. Often they're misunderstood, mischaracterised, misdiagnosed or dismissed. And I think that's troubling. Amelia looked amazing, didn't she? Did she do her own makeup? Um, I don't know. I am in here. Chocolate milk? I don't know in here. Yogurt. I've got apples and, and a can. Oh, you want to squirt? Because there's can here. For a couple of years, I've been having a really sore upper stomach after eating, and I been losing weight and I've just haven't been eating much because it's very painful. When it's severe enough, the gut sleeps. It lacks this propulsive function to push things through and when forced to do so, there's some um, significant pain. What did you choose, yoga? No. This is a banana. And so these individuals curtail their intake. It's just a natural reaction, even to the extent of, of wasting away. That can look like a, an eating disorder. Don't eat it if you don't want it. I'm not really eating it. Food doesn't get through it, it just causes a lot of pain. That's certainly, yeah. We're waiting to see a doctor. I got a nasojejunal tube placed to help me, like, sustain weight. Once we were told about abdominal vascular compression syndromes being a very rare thing that can occur in patients with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos, we looked into it more and we found that there was two other Kiwis at that point who had been to Germany. So we reached out to the Germans for a second opinion. They confirmed that this is what it was. Our doctors here were really adamant that this wasn't what it was. And we just had to decide, do we go with Team Germany or Team New Zealand? And then we made our decision to go to Germany. The surgery was about eight months ago. We set up the Facebook page really to keep people updated. And then we started getting contact from other people who said, my daughter's been in hospital, or my daughter sounds the same. Larissa first reached out through Facebook saying, hey, I've got this daughter, Tyler, who's going through a similar thing. Hi, Larissa, how are you? Uh, hi, Rachel. You said Tyler's not been very well lately. Not so good. Yeah. A bit of a decline in her health recently. A bit concerned, really, more sort of gut problems than Ella's Danlos problems. And you were saying you have got an appointment to come and see a specialist? Yeah, we do. Looking forward to that, coming up to Hamilton and learning more about it. And we get to meet you guys, which would be really cool. Jemima and I can't wait, actually, to see yeah. you. And anything it's you need, yeah. we'll, we'll be here for you. And it will be good to talk mum to mum as well, because I think that's how I've got where I am, is the support of other mums. Oh, right, let's hook that up. Uh, today's day one of the Impax comps in Blenheim, and we're heading out the door now with hair and makeup, hopefully all the shoes, costumes. On the positive side, the feeding tube is keeping her sustained and her weight on and energy enough to do her dancing because she was in a very unwell place before we had that fixed. Just being able to do less and less every day. All right, you got all your dance shoes, Tyler? Yes. Got your underwear? Yes. Brush your teeth? Yes. It's kind of a new evolution, really, into discovering, for New Zealand anyway, how these compressions are and how to fix them. We're waiting to go up to Hamilton to get some imaging done for that. It's a big brain. It takes up all the space. You still have a pumpkin. You do? Is that nice. going to be enough? Oh, yes. I should definitely not be dancing. Give it a bit of a tease. Do you know how to back that? I should be in bed or I should be at physio trying to build my muscles up the correct way instead of just making noises with my feet at tap. <laughs> But I don't care. It's fun. It's working for me. I 
I just feel a little bit different when we're at dancing. I mean, I've got this irrigation on my face. I have to take breaks sometimes. I definitely like rely on using my muscles to do everything instead of my joints, which in turn makes me get tired very easily. <laughs> I feel like this goes for a lot of chronically ill people, but especially with Ellis Danlos. Even if we look like we're having the time of our lives, we're probably not. We've probably got some joint that's about to pop out of place. I probably am having fun, but I'm also probably, there's just like a thought in the back of my brain that's like, ow, why'd my knee do that? Watching Tyler tonight do the lead in Beetlejuice, knowing how absolutely exhausted she is and how much she's in pain. She's hurt her elbow. She's got both knees taped under the stockings. She's hurting, she's tired. First place went to team number one, Marlboro Tech Studio, Beetlejuice. but she still smashed it and I'm so proud of her and just can't believe she can pull that out. The last few weeks have been educational. We have spent a fortnight in a hospital. They took my tube out because it got too blocked up and they couldn't replace it under radiology. So they sent me home for a week to see if I could survive by eating and drinking, and I could not. So I had to go into hospital and get IV fluids. We're here in, in Hamilton to talk to a vascular surgeon. The decline that began six months ago through the dance competition is continuing. We're going to get some imaging done to find out what exactly this complication is and, and what path we need to take. We're also going to meet another family hey, hello. who have nice been you. through an incredible, incredible journey. Rachel is the mum to Jemima who has been to Germany and had this amazing vascular decompression surgery. Tyler finally got her diagnosis July last year. All the puzzle pieces sort of fell together. How, how did you come about your diagnosis? Took a long time, yeah. but we had some scans done and I had taken her to Auckland and had her diagnosed with Ellis Danlos syndrome, at the hypermobile variant. Mm -hmm. And it was the doctor up there who said, hey, um, there's this thing that can very, very rarely occur in these young patients. Usually, but not always, when they get hips, the hips widen and everything inside drops and it can cause these oh. things called abdominal vascular compression syndromes. We were able to send those scans over to the Germans and they said, you need to come. These are my crayons. So when I was in hospital for six months, my friends worked really hard on making them. There's a thousand of them now. Oh my gosh. Yep. There's a legend, a Japanese legend that says, if someone makes a thousand crayons, the person who made them or the person they gift them to is rewarded for health. And I got it three days before I left for Germany. That is so sweet. And now sweet. I'm back. And I've got my cranes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is so cool. Thanks. That's so good that you found those German professors. Yeah, I don't know what we would have done without them because at that point she couldn't she swallow sick. anything. She couldn't eat and drink and she was also losing feeling in her legs. How was the plane ride? As good as it can be when you're in constant pain and yeah. you're throwing up I all feel the time. you. <laughs> Some guy actually leaned over and he was like, are you finished yet? <laughs> she had the surgery and it was enormous. It was really, really difficult and it's, it's not the sort of thing I guess that you would do unless you're actually really worried for your child's life. It was so different over there in the hospital. They really understood, like I suppose they work with these yeah. people with our like syndromes like daily, but it felt really good like to have a doctor that actually like believed you. <laughs> End of an era. It's been difficult, I think like any surgery. It's, yeah. It takes a lot of work. It's not just you wake up and you're cured. It's a lot of physio, like dietitians. You've got to eat the right things. You've 
like really got to build all your strength back up and stuff. Um, you look good. Thank you. Your eyelashes also look really good. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> you just look very slyful. <laughs> thank you. It's crazy what like post surgery happens. Like got muscles. Oh like, my god. Kind of. And here, and my eyelashes are longer, and my eyebrows are longer, <laughs> and like I can do things. That's at least you've said all day. Physicians overseas are beginning to do vascular surgery in the abdomen because they feel the seat of the intestinal disturbance is vascular. But again, we, we sorely need evaluation of that. It's a major deal, that sort of surgery. So we need to feel confident that we're intervening for benefit and we need to know which patients will benefit ahead of time before I think confidence will be widespread about that approach. And of course it's pretty frustrating to hear the first do no harm sort of idea when you're a person who's got extreme symptoms and you're convinced that an intervention is your only hope. It's a difficult situation, I acknowledge that. I'm feeling a lot better nowadays. It's up and down. I mean, I can keep a healthy weight. I'm back at dancing again, which I missed out on for so long. There is certainly evidence from some New Zealanders that they've had absolutely dramatic outcomes from having this surgery. And I'm gratified to see that, gratified to hear it. Her health has deteriorated and it is continually declining but we will take each step as it comes. Ella's Danlos, we know what we're dealing with. The component of what the hell's wrong with this child has gone. The surgery is in Germany. Because we're not citizens of Germany, it's not funded. And we're talking 160 to $180,000, but we will get it, we'll borrow it, we'll, I don't know, but we'll get her fixed because we'll be back to bubbly, healthy, vibrant Tyler. I'm hoping that I can still dance in the near future. I know I'm getting sicker, it's obvious. I'm, with how I'm feeling, I feel like I should probably be sitting in a hospital bed. Like, I just hope I can still dance. will always have the dislocations and the chronic pain and the chronic fatigue, but we can manage that. But we need to get this compression operated on.